I need to underline something covered in my newspaper columns this morning and very well by Rowan Dean yesterday on Outsiders. Catch up with uh, his report on this. I need to do this because this is extremely important. It cannot be emphasised enough. It is proof that you are being totally conned by the Prime Minister about his voice, the kind of Aboriginal Parliament it wants you to vote for later this year in a referendum. Newsflash, we have a voice already. We already have a massive organisation paid for by you doing exactly what Albanese claims is the main reason for creating a voice. Now, in asking Australians to support an alteration of the Constitution that establishes an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voice, we're asking people to say yes to a modest but a meaningful change. Now, Albanese keeps repeating that line that the reason we need a voice is that it will mean Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are consulted on the decisions which affect them. Nothing more, nothing less, he says. But here's the crazy thing. That is almost word for word the mission statement of the National Indigenous Australian Agency that we already give $2 billion a year to. Its Aboriginal boss, Jody Brown, says she's doing exactly that work already. She says this National Indigenous Australians Agency already works in genuine partnership to enable the self-determination aspirations of First Nations communities. We lead and influence change across government to, and now listen carefully, because these are the Albanese words, to ensure Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples have a say in the decisions that affect them. That's exactly what Albanese says he wants and that's exactly what he's getting already from this agency. Now, Albanese should know this. He should know he already has this huge bureaucracy doing exactly what he says is the main job for the voice that he wants, consulting Aborigines about things that affect them. I mean, it's not as if he could have overlooked this agency. It isn't small. It has 1,000 200 staff in 39 offices around the country. We pay them $160 million in wages and benefits. How could Albanese have missed that? And it's lobbying the government, advising and advising, just like Albanese says the voice should do. It reports to Albanese's Indigenous Australians Minister. It reports to his assistant, Indigenous Australians Minister. And also talks to his special envoy for reconciliation. And last financial year, it also gave evidence to no fewer than 12 parliamentary committees. Isn't this exactly what Albanese says he wants the voice to do? Exactly that? So you think you either uh, scrap the voice or scrap this massive agency? Because this sure doesn't come cheap. I mean, last year it spent nearly $2 billion of your money. And by the way, how often have I said it's not even on its own in advising the government? I mean, we've got already a massive number of groups telling the government what to do for our 810,000 Aborigines. There's more than 30 land councils, 3,000 Aboriginal corporations. We've got 11 Aboriginal federal politicians already. And there's the Council at Peaks, representing about 70 big Aboriginal agencies. It's already said that it has been in partnership with the government in trying to close the gap. You've got consultation and you've got this, well, it looks like the voice. So who needs the one that Albanese is trying to get you to vote for? What's the game here? Now, when the ABC last week learned that uh, we really seem to have a voice, it freaked. This is not what it wanted to hear. So no, 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 it said, you know, in a fact check, fact check. Indigenous Australians don't already have a voice to Parliament. It said there's a difference with this voice. For why don't we be independent of government? But will it? I mean, I've checked the government's blueprint for The Voice. It's written by Marsha Langton and Tom Karma. It actually says that the members won't be directly elected. They'll somehow magically be selected. But how, by whom exactly, is a little unclear. I mean, the government or parliament, they're going to set or approve the election rules. Uh, they'll determine the members' powers. They'll decide who gets paid what and what they do. I mean, how independent is that? 
the ABC then says, well, look, you know, but it is still different because the agency that already exists and that you're paying for is actually, so, oh, well, I did admit it's supposed to give, you know, f free and fearless advice. Okay. It's not that toothless. But the government will still makes the final decision. So that's, uh, that's a difference. But it's not. It's not at all. Albanese claims that Parliament will still make the decisions if we get a voice. And it's, of course, is conning you. It will simply be an advisory group that will be not above Parliament. Uh, its its uh, advice doesn't have to be taken. And lastly, the ABC tells us, well, this, this voice is different because, you know, this agency, it doesn't count because it's got lots of whites working for it, even if two of its three top executives and both its ministers are Aborigines and they're calling the shots. Not a staff are white. But whites could be on the voice as well. Unbelievable, but true. Aboriginal activists such as Susan Ingram, they claim as many as a third of Aborigines aren't really. If we were to look at the, um, the census numbers, it's now projecting past 800,000. If there was... If there was to be, you know, an actual um, review on that and an audit on that, I would suggest, and there has been some data to suggest that it's actually probably about 300,000 less. So we've got 300,000 people here who are counting themselves amongst us. 300,000 fakes. Well, that's probably why the Langton Karma report says we mustn't have direct elections for The Voice. Mustn't. It says uh, that's just going to have Aborigines complaining that the people voting or running, they're not real Aborigines and we can't have that. So, that just leaves one big difference. that, Unlike this agency that we already pay for, $2 billion, this voice, because Albany wants it in the Constitution, that can't be sacked, even if it's totally useless or worse. This agency we could scrap tomorrow if it turns out to be corrupt or inefficient or whatever. Scrap it tomorrow. The voice, he won't be able to. And that's not a big selling point for me. In fact, it's a danger. So why don't we just stick with this National Indigenous Australians Agency and save ourselves the grief, the danger and the cash of creating a voice as well? After all, this agency says it's already doing what Albanese says he wants for the voice. Or is there something else he isn't saying?